Welcome to the brand new section of this course, Cross-Validation and Post-Model Workflow. In this section, we will look at topics such as Cross-Validation, Search with Scikit-Learn, Metrics, Dummy Estimators and Persisting Models with Joblib, and Feature Selection. Now let's move on to the video, Cross-Validation. In this video, first we will load the last two features columns of the Iris dataset then split the data into training and testing data. After that, instantiate two K nearest neighbors, KNN algorithms, with three and five neighbors. Next, we will score both algorithms. And finally, select the model that scores the best. We will start with selecting a model with cross-validation. First, we will import the data sets from sklearn, then load the iris data iris data set. This will load the first two features, and this will load the targets in X and Y respectively. Next, split the data into training and testing. The samples are stratified, the defaults throughout the course. Stratified means that the proportions of the target variable are the same in both the training and testing sets. Also, random state is set to seven. We will instantiate two nearest neighbor algorithms. Now, score both algorithms using cross-val score and view KN3 scores, a list of scores. Run it and you will get the array output as shown here. View KN5 scores with this command. Run it and here is the output array as expected. Next, we will view basic statistics of both lists with this command. So view the means. After that, view the spreads. Look at the standard deviations with the highlighted command. After running it, you will get the output like this. Overall, KN5 performs a little better than three neighbors, yet it is less stable. Its scores are a bit more all over the place. Let's now do the final step. Select the model that scores the highest. We select KN5 because it scores the highest under cross-validation. So now we will look at the K-fold cross-validation. In the quest to find the best model, you can view the indices of cross-validation folds and see what the data is in each fold. To start with creating a toy data set that is very small. After that, we will import kfold and select the number of splits. You can iterate through the generator and print out the indices. So run it and you would get the output same as we got now. You can see how in the first round there are two testing indices, zero and one. 0 and 1 constitutes the first fold. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 are folds 2, 3 and 4 put together. You can view the number of splits with this command. Run it and you will get the output as 4. The number of splits is 4, which we set when we instantiated the k-fold class. Now if you want, you can view the data in the folds themselves. Store the generator as a list with this command. Here, indices list is a list of tuples. View the information for the fourth fold. The list is indexed from zero to three. Run it and the fourth fold array will be the same as highlighted. As you can see, this information matches the information from this printout, except it is in the form of a tuple of two NumPy arrays. So view the actual data from the fourth fold and view the training data from the fourth fold. This is the output that you will get. Then we will see the Y train. And here is the output that you would get after running it. Next, we will view the test data for X and Y respectively. Run it and here is the output. This is for X and this is for Y. Now let's look at balanced cross validation. So we will start with creating a toy data set. After creating it, we will perform four fold cross validation on this miniature toy data set. Each of the four testing folds will have only one value for the target. This can be remedied using stratified K fold. Post that, we will print out the indices of the folds. Run this code and you would get the output as seen here. Observe that the split method of the SKF class, the stratified K fold split, has two arguments, X and Y. It tries to distribute the target Y with the same distribution in each of the fold sets. In this case, every subset has 50% of one and 50% of two, 
just like the whole target is set Y. You can use Stratified Shuffle Split to reshuffle the Stratified Fold. Note that this does not try to make four folds with testing sets that are mutually exclusive. We will use number of splits as 5 and test size as 0 0.25. This will get the rounds for the indices. Let's run it. The splits are not split of the data set but iterations of a random procedure, each one with a training set size of 75% of the whole data set and a testing set size of 25%. All of the iterations are stratified. So next we will see cross validation with shuffle split. The shuffle split is one of the simplest cross validation techniques. Using this cross validation technique will simply take a sample of the data for the number of iterations specified. The shuffle split is a simple validation technique. We'll specify the total elements in the data set and it will take care of the rest. We'll walk through an example of estimating the mean of a univariate data set. This is similar to resampling but it will illustrate why we want to use cross-validation while showing cross-validation. First we need to create the data set. We'll use NumPy to create a data set in which we know the underlying mean. We'll sample half of the data set to estimate the mean and see how close it is to the underlying mean. Generate a normally distributed random sample with a mean of 1000 and a scale of 10. With these commands we will visualize the content. Let's run it. And you would get the plot as seen here. Now let's estimate the mean of half of the data set. Run it and you will get the output as shown here. You can also get the mean of the whole data set with the help of this command. Run it and you will get the output as 999.47. It is not 1000 because random points were selected to create the data set. To observe the behavior of shuffle split, type this and make a plot. Run it and here is the plot. The estimated mean keeps getting closer to the data's mean of 999.551773437678843 and then plateaus at being 0 0.1 away from the data's mean. It is a bit closer than the estimate of the mean, with half of the data set to the mean of the data. Finally, we will look at the last cross validation that is time series cross validation. We will create the indices for a time series split. Start by creating a small toy data set. Now create a time series split object. We will have a time series split of 7. Use for loop to iterate through each series. Let's run it and you would get the output as highlighted here. You can also save the indices by creating a list of tuples from the generator. So here we have come to the end of this video.